Oh, dang. Did that virus actually kill him? What? No, he just fell asleep during the game. Ah, right. Kind of obvious now that I think about it, because he's not, you know. Not what? Well, bricked up. I'm sorry, what? You know. Boop? Why would he be bricked up? Because rigor mortis. Rigor mortis makes the body stiff. Exactly. No, no, not like that. And besides, he could be that without being dead. I mean, hey, Loquall, Bergeron's coming out of retirement. Oh my god, you killed him! Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is not a dub. And it's not a dub that I am trying really hard not to read too much into. Because I know, and I can see on the social medias and the Discord and all this stuff, how upset people are. There's a lot about this game to be upset about. It was a terrible effort. It was. It just... Other than Olmark, no one really showed up. There was a couple players who did, but when they did, it was only for small pockets of the game. We ended the night, I think according to Natural Stat Trick, we ended the night with three high danger chances the entire game. We had 24 shots on net, uh, zero shots on net for the last seven minutes of the third period where we down a goal. Um, yeah, just a bad effort through and through. A lot of dump and chase where no one chased. There was no four check. We... It was really kind of like, hey, short shifts, everybody. Let's throw the puck in the zone and change out our forwards. And we were just giving the puck back over and over and over again. Um, credit to Tampa, who pinned us in our zone a bunch of times. It just felt like with Lindholm and Carlo and Watherspoon and Grizz passing them the puck over and over and over and over again, it's hard to give them that much credit. But... Uh, Tampa did play a really tenacious game, and the Bruins just weren't prepared for it. Especially when you start making excuses, which we can make a few. Yesterday's game was one of the most tenacious games we've played in a while against Florida. It was a really hard-hitting, heavy game. So maybe that exhaustion factor comes into play a little bit. Uh, that's kind of my excuse. That's all I've really got for this. I, I would like to say, hey, this game meant more to Tampa than Boston in the standings, but also Boston is still trying. Like, those players want to keep winning these games late into the stretch. I don't believe, and the numbers back me up on this, how you finish the last 10 games of the season don't really correlate with your playoff success all that well. Uh, that's just, I mean, if you go back and look at Cup champions, you'll see that the last 10 games is a mixed bag across the board. You have teams that came into the playoffs uh, losing seven of eight games and went on a deep run. You have teams that went undefeated over the last 10 games and then just got wiped out in the first round. It's kind of fun to look at, but it's it doesn't correlate at all. So as much as I don't really care that much about these last few results, and I've already said I don't care that much about the standings, the effort for this one sucked so much it makes you kind of take a step back on that and go, okay, yeah, but the team still has to be playing well. They still have to have something there. The good news out of this is Olmark is a good effort. Maybe he's squeezing his way into that game one role. I don't know. As you can tell, like, comment, subscribe, nailed it. As you can tell, I'm still recovering. Uh, the voice is not there yet. I've been sleeping for the, I, I slept for like 18 hours today. It was, uh, it's been a go of it. Let's talk about this Tampa team a little bit. It is our fourth and final meeting. Going into this game, we are 1-0-2 against them, having dropped two overtime, one, well, one overtime, one shootout, and we won one in regulation uh, in a really crazy game. That game, that 7-3 win um, against Tampa, is a game that they've pointed to and that fan base has pointed to as that was kind of our turning point. Ever since then, they've been playing really great hockey. They are firmly in a wild card spot, in the first wild card spot, and have an outside chance of catching the Leafs for third in the Atlantic. Uh, Vasilevsky has yet to return to form. He was, I don't, I don't think he was great in this game. Honestly, if you look at the advanced analytics again, that will back me up, up that point. But twenty-four uh, shots, twenty-three saves. Can you point to all that many difficult saves he had to make? One and dones, easy, not a lot in tight on him. 
just not a difficult game. Like kudos to him, but didn't have to do much. But he's still at a sub nine hundred save percentage on the season. Uh, in fact, the Tampa Bay Lightning ranked twenty third in goals allowed per game. Not something we're used to seeing from them. But they have the number one power play. They have a top ten penalty kill. And they have Kucherov going absolutely nutty on the rest of the league. So that's going to tilt a lot of games in your favor with that kind of setup. And it's a it's a successful design in the playoffs as well. As much as we want to talk about power plays going down in the playoffs, they're still going to be there. And having good special teams makes a huge difference. Uh, not to mention Point and Kucherov be making any first-line matchup a lopsided matchup in the east for them um having trouble finding a first line in the east that i choose over a point kucherov tandem as for the bruins there's going to be a couple of changes to the lineup as we predicted jvr is going to be in for lauco i was pretty harsh on lauco last video and i said that the first 30 seconds would get him benched the next game Obviously, we don't know if that's what actually caused it. I'm going to pretend I was correct because I like feeling like a smart boy once in a while. And switching up the defense, which turned out to be not a great idea. But I understand because we are nine games, eight games out from the playoffs at this point and getting new looks, getting more chemistry, uh, expecting injuries, things of that nature. Switching it up a little bit can just prepare you for the future. That being said, Carlo got dropped to the third pair with Watherspoon. Pete got brought up to play with Linto. Now look, no one looked all that good. So, little asterisk on this. But that third pair was the worst we've seen Carlo and Watherspoon play. Individually, it's the worst we've seen from both of them, I think, this season. It's close, but I think that might be true. It did not work. Olmark's going to get to start. And let's talk about this game. Puck drops. I tried. We started on time. If the game started 12 minutes later. Again. Again. The Bruins are never ready to start the game. That's something that I will toss on Monty's head left and right all the time. They're never ready to start a game. No matter if, if it's important. And this is one of those games like after the game. Monty... Uh, Carlo, not Carlo, Monty, Olmark, and Pasta had interviews, and every single one of them cited the difficult schedule. Okay, I don't, I don't exactly love that they all threw that out there, like, ah, oh, well, you know. On a back-to-back, -back, you gotta get up for the first period, because your legs might not be there in the third. But your legs weren't there for any of it. Any of it. But to start off as slow as you did, you got to be more ready to play than that. It's not like this is a new team that you don't know how to play against. This is Tampa. This is the fourth time you're playing them this year. There has to be some sort of understanding there. It just wasn't there tonight. Either way, it's going to it's gonna bite us at 9.54 left of the period. This was the third pair. And insane how this was played. Because the puck gets bumped out to the neutral zone. They collect. They go right back in. Asimont passes to Paul, who takes the right corner. He's on the right uh, point. And Watherspoon's in front of him. And whether Watherspoon was on the correct side or not, which he was, now that I think about it, Carlo sprints over to also meet Paul at the point. So now you've got your two big defensemen who don't move very well, very quickly, both at the right point. Paul is just going to... Bash this over to Chaffee, who's going down the middle of the ice. You can blame JVR a little bit here because his back check sucked. But why is Carlo making this play? I have no idea why he sprints up to the point here. Either way, it's a breakaway. Top blocker. Hell of a shot. And it's 1-0, just like that. And it's a complete breakdown. Maybe it's exhaustion. Maybe it's a mental lapse. Whatever you want. It's definitely a mental lapse. Whatever you want to call it. But it's just a silly decision. And that's... Communication or not, that's just fundamentally a weird decision to make when you play defense. Two minutes later, JVR is going to continue his tough start to the return of the lineup, where he is going to hold Chaffee, we're going to go on the penalty kill. We end up killing that. And with 2.49 left, the Bruins are finally going to show some life. They've had some shifts where they're tossing the puck in and actually getting there to create some havoc, although it's not really creating too many chances. But Pasternak, who is one of the few players who had the energy tonight and showed up for a bunch of shifts 
So I want to give him a little shout out. But he comes flying in to disturb Doomba. They were doing a good job, I thought, at a, for a small portion of this game, attacking Doomba's side. Doomba was not responsible with the puck at all. And so I thought, okay, good. You found someone that you can target because you're struggling to get things going. Can we continue to funnel things that direction? And either Tampa adjusted or we just stopped doing it because I did not see them attack that side pretty much at all after that, eh, basically five minutes into the second. It was tough. Anyway, Pasta's going to force Doomba into a bad drop pass as he's expecting his defensive partner to be there in the right corner. But Zaka actually gets there first and quickly sends this over to Heinen, who's alone in the slot, and goes high blocker on Vasilevsky. It's 1-1, and you go, all right, we're back in this. We were only down a goal. We were never out of it, but we're in this. We don't have it tonight, but we keep the game close, which this Bruins team is good at doing. We'll see how it goes. And directly after the goal, Janot lays a big hit on Lindholm. And Freddie wants to make a statement. He runs over, grabs Janot. They shed him. And as soon as they shed him, Janot, uh, this wasn't a dirty play or anything like this. He just gets him with the uppercut. And he cuts him good. Freddie has to then kind of buckle and just hold on. Because at that point, he's dazed. He can't fight back safely. He's just covering up that side that is bleeding like a sieve at this point. It's over. The fight's over. Janot is throwing some punches before he realizes it. It feels like Janot realized it and then kind of let up as the ref came in. So they get split up. Freddie's still smiling. He gets patched up. He's back in the game. No no harm, no foul there. 145 left. A quick breakout leads to a 3-on-2. This was a pivotal moment in this game because Lindholm pushes the puck to Marshand, who's trailing in the high slot all alone, and he's got a great chance. But he decides to pass to Coil. That's one too many passes. All right, Coyle, try the sharp angle. No, Coyle immediately taps back to Marshand, who now has a back checker draped all over him. No shot gets taken. Two too many passes. The Coyle pass is unacceptable going back to Marshand. You can see that he's completely covered. I have no idea why you'd do that. Marshand's pass to him I kind of get, but Marshand should have just shot. This team, especially on a night where you don't have it, shoot the puck, get him on Vasilevsky, Right? Like, stop trying the extra pass. Stop trying to make the perfect play. Get gritty. Get dirty. 1-1 one, one going into the second. If you watch this game, then you know that the next 40 minutes is a bit of a slog. 6.50 in, Tampa is about to score on their eighth shot of the period. The Bruins haven't had one. Not one shot. Tampa gets set up for what feels like the 600th time this game. The shot taken from the right point, misses wide, Tampa recovers, they get it back to the right point once again, where Lilleberg unleashes, misses wide, but what the fuck is this? Why in the world do you just forget that point exists, first of all? Second of all, you all move up? Like, I just... What is this defensive structure, I guess, is my question. Lindholm, peak, and to a lesser degree, geeky. Like, this isn't on him specifically. Look how high you guys are. Look where that player is going after the puck. And look how late you're going to be as Point just wraps right around to the blocker side and dunks it on Olmark with speed. God, it was fluid. It was fast. But you, <laughs> you got to be more prepared for the puck to get down low. It's insane to me. If they wrapped that puck around, the result would have been the same instead of shooting it. Why did you all bite that hard? Insane to me. It's 2-1. And that's more or less your final score. This is going to be an empty net in there. Uh, 729 in. Pasta's going to get tripped by Stammer. We're going to go power play. It ain't good. It ain't good. And then with 140 left, Pasta gets tripped by Duclair. We're going to go to the power play. Uh, it was better, but we didn't score on it. 6.02 into the third period. The Bruins are sleepwalking still. We're down a goal in the third period, and there's still just nothing. And Watherspoon, with a tough pass into the skates of Geeky, creates a turnover on our blue line. Tampa gets set up for what feels like the 9,000th time in this game. And there's a blast from the right point. Again, it gets blocked down, but it bounces to Stamkos, who just a good bounce for them, gets to hammer this blocker side before Omark really even gets a beat on this. Luckily, we challenge for offsides, and I guess it was... Still hate these challenges. I mean, that was by a hair if it was offsides. Like, that's not... 
that's not why that rule was created, man. It just wasn't. It's so disingenuous. 26 seconds left of the period. Uh, Tampa shows us how easy it is to score on an empty net because we dump it in and Hedman is in the back and he collects it and he ices it immediately. But Kucherov is cherry picking by 40 feet. So he gets there first and gets to just whip it into the net in this 3-1. Kucherov just patting those stats, but also that's a good way to ice the game. And the Bruins are sitting there going, wait, we could have just done that? Like, yes, you could have just done that. Also, when other teams are playing six on five, they don't dump the puck into the other to the opponent's zone and then not bring a four check. Like they don't they don't do that because they know that they have an empty net that's very easy to score on because you don't have a goalie in there and you're giving possession back and allowing them to have a controlled exit. I have no idea what we were doing in this game. I don't get it. Also, big point to make, zero shots in the last seven minutes of this game for us, down by one. That's not good. That's not good. It wasn't a good game. And the game notes, don't read too much into this one game, but it is genuinely true that the Bruins are playing way too many half periods. They are. There's too many moments where they wait till they're down a goal, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, shit, here they come. Like, what? Can we start a couple games on time? Please, that's not a flip you can switch in the playoffs. It just isn't. Start games on time. Monty, like, we're all looking at you for that one. And a little bit Marsha in, too. You're the captain. But this this can't continue to be a thing. Why do we always start these games late? Zero shots in the last seven minutes is pathetic. It's really bad. I know that you're gassed. I, I get it. But you can't even throw one on net. Really? Game on the line, down a goal? It's not a good look. JVR, Boquist, and Watherspoon, unless I missed an injury, all benched in the third period. Uh, All of them for varying amounts. JVR, I think, got two shifts. I think Boquist got one. And then Watherspoon got a couple, and then late in the game was benched. Every single one of them deserved to be benched. None of them were having good games. Uh, There are more who deserve to be benched, but hey, you can't bench everybody. And then Carlo Watherspoon tandem was lost. I think they play too similar of a game. I think that's too tough for them to uh, sort that out. Neither one of them is fleet of foot. They're not quick. They're big bodies, blocking shots, responsible clearances, uh, good stick work. But they're not quick, and they're not good puck movers. So I don't think that pairing makes a ton of sense unless it's on a penalty kill. Not really sure why we tried that for a full game. Unless we just really wanted peak with Lindholm for a game to get that going a little bit. Which I get. Again, I still get it. But it's one game. Maybe that pairing has a better showing next time we use it and they get a little more chemistry. But right now, that looked real bad. All right, guys. That does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to edit this, get it out. And I'm going to get some sleep. Go beast! Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, but it is time to give a shout out to our high quality inspectors. We've got our top line tier inspectors. We got Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Coach D, The Bug Man, The Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, Aaron Adams, Just Aaron, Darren Woodbury, Brett Arney, Pinsent, and Nick Zatrulo. Thank you guys so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And of course, massive props to these absolute stallions, the all-star tier inspectors. We have Bruin Smash, Jason Ozzy, Bruin Connolly, Heil E. Coyote, Adam Ella, Jonathan Harvey, Joel, Abraxion, Jacob Pratt, Tupton D. Tashi, D.A. Kingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, Dutes42, and Jeremy. You guys are absolute studs. I can't thank you enough, and go bees.